The Fallout games have a wide assortment of consumables designed to temporarily aid players with their wasteland adventures. Among these, one category stands out for its potential to both empower and destroy. Chems. But what exactly are substances like Psycho, Daddio, and Mentats? These names might seem harmless, even playful, however, their effects are anything but. Today, let's go over the lore for each addictive chem in Fallout, what they do, and their closest real-life equivalent. Now, I should note that this is merely for educational purposes only. Don't do chems, kids. Buff out. We're starting off relatively easy with our first one. Since being first introduced in the first Fallout game in 1997, Buff out has consistently acted as a quick way to temporarily boost one's strength and endurance. While some iterations have also increased agility or max hit points, strength and endurance have always been the hallmarks of buff out. This enhancement allows for greater carrying capacity, improved melee combat effectiveness, and an increased durability. Its temporary nature makes it great for short engagements or strenuous activities, like fast traveling to the nearest vendor. Now, to no one's surprise, the real life equivalent to buff out is some combination of anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids are known for their ability to enhance muscle mass and physical performance, similar to Buffett's strength and endurance boosts. The in-game description for the chem in the first game reads, highly advanced steroids. While in effect, they increase strength and reflexes, very addictive. And a loading screen tip in Fallout 4 describing the chem reads, Buffout is a powerful steroid that gained popularity with athletes before the Great War. It grants temporary bonuses to strength, endurance, and maximum health. As seen on the packaging, inside the container, you will typically find 50 tablets, ready to be popped at a moment's notice. According to Rose's Raider Radio, once consumed, it allows users to run longer and work out harder. Buffout's popularity resulted in people mixing it with other chems, making things like buff tats and psycho buff. However, like all chems on this list, buff out is highly addictive. A natty look is achievable. Don't take buff out. Calmax. Calmax is another notable consumable in the Fallout universe, recognized for its ability to enhance mental clarity and reduce stress. Designed as a pre-war light tranquilizer, Comex serves a different but equally valuable role compared to the physical enhancement drugs like Buffout. Scarcely found in the wasteland, Comex is a purplish medication that comes in a syringe. Upon consumption, Comex acts quickly to soothe the user's nerves, effectively reducing anxiety and fear. This calm allows the user to perform delicate tasks such as hacking, lockpicking, or stealth operations without the interference of panic or stress-induced errors. An entry on the chem in the Fallout the Role-Playing Game book describes Comex as a light tranquilizer used to calm the nerves. It isn't potent enough to function as a painkiller, but a dose can quiet anxieties and fears, keeping panic from disturbing delicate activities. This is represented in-game by granting bonuses to agility and perception the two special attributes that lend themselves to both stealth, infiltration, and ranged ballistics combat. It is a valuable tool for those who need a little extra help with being calm, cool, and collected. In the real world, Comex is likely some sort of benzodiazepine. These are a class of medication commonly prescribed for their sedative and anti-anxiety effects. Some common benzodiazepines are diazepam or Valium, and Alprazolam, or Xanax. However, where Comex provides a calming but alert effect, common side effects of a medication like Valium is drowsiness and tiredness, so Comex is likely some variation or hybrid chem. With all that being said, you don't need to take Comex to be a lockpicking computer hacking stealth lord. You just need some patience. That's all. Don't take Comex. Daddio. Daddio is one of the more obscure chems in the Fallout universe. A Fallout 4 loading screen reads, Popular with beatniks and intellectuals before the Great War, Daddio raises intelligence and perception, but lowers charisma, 
for a limited period of time. Daddio comes in a syringe that holds two orange vials. When consumed, it provides significant boosts to the user's cognitive functions and sensory awareness. This is reflected in-game by the boosts to intelligence and perception attributes. However, these boosts come with a notable downside. Users of Daddio find themselves less socially adept, struggling with personal interactions, or in other words, it temporarily reduces your charisma by two. Like Comex, while there is no obvious real-life counterpart for Daddio, its effects are somewhat similar to some types of nootropics. Nootropics, often referred to as smart drugs, are substances that can enhance cognitive function, improve memory, and boost energy levels. But like with all chems on this list, you don't need to take it. Sure, a boost to the smart stat would be nice, but me no thank you dum dum, you smart. Don't take daddio. Day Tripper. Day Tripper is a mood altering chem that provides a euphoric escape from the harsh realities of the wasteland. Its fallout for loading screen tip reads, a pre-war chem favored by those looking for a happy escape. Day Tripper raises both charisma and luck, but lowers strength for a limited period of time. Day Tripper comes in a capsule form in bottles that are colorfully decorated. When ingested, it leaves the user in a state of euphoria, improving their mood, agreeability, and social acuity. This is reflected through the temporary charisma and luck stat bonuses. However, it is thanks to the negative two strength that it might also relax the user's muscles, leaving them in a weakened state while under the chem's effects. The most obvious real life counterpart to day tripper would be methylene dioxymethamphetamine, aka MDMA, aka ecstasy. MDMA is known for its ability to induce feelings of euphoria, increase sociability, and emotional closeness with others, aligning it well to Day Tripper's boosts in charisma. The enhanced feeling of well-being and luck parallels the perceived increase in fortunate outcomes and positive interactions. However, like all chems we're going over today, reliance and addiction pose significant risks to those who consume the chem. Let's be real, if you need Day Tripper in order to seduce Piper, that relationship wasn't going to last that long. Don't take Day Tripper. Hydra. On to a more homemade chem. Hydra is a powerful and potent chem known for healing properties that allow users to recover from significant injuries. It is particularly valued for its ability to target and heal damaged limbs, making it a crucial resource for surviving the wasteland. Unlike the other chems on this list, Hydra doesn't appear to have been manufactured pre-war. Rather, its appearance is rather crude. It looks to be made out of a super yum soda bottle with three vials taped around it. Small tubes connect these vials to the bottle. In fact, in New Vegas, the only game in which Hydra appears, the player can craft it with some cave fungus, a rad scorpion gland, and some night stalker blood. Didn't have that in pre-war, did ya? Anyway, when administered, Hydra would seem to stimulate the body's natural healing processes, targeting damaged limbs specifically. This is shown in-game as it grants plus 10 to limb condition per second for 60 seconds. Now, just like the stim pack video of old, there isn't really some mystical super healing medicine in the real world. However, Hydra's effects could be described as similar to treatments that are currently being studied and researched today. Stem cell therapy is a promising kind of regenerative treatment that is capable of repairing the body by developing into cells needed by your body. Stem cells can develop into brain cells, heart muscle cells, bone cells, or whatever else is needed. This is similar to Hydra's rapid limb regeneration. In a more practical sense, Hydra really could just be some sort of powerful painkiller, and rather than outright healing your limbs, it just makes the pain that you're feeling disappear, giving you this illusion of health. After all, a damaged limb in-game could be anywhere from broken bones to a mild sprain, right? So, rather than just magically healing your sprained arm, what if Hydra just made the pain go away? Physically, your arm might not be as good as new, but it might feel as good as new. And when you're in the deadly wasteland with rudimentary medical practices, 
who's to say that there's a difference? Still, pain is an important survival sense that keeps animals aware of their body's current capabilities. You don't want to suppress that, right? No pain, no gain. Don't take Hydra. Jet Maybe the most notorious addictive chem in the Fallout franchise is Jet. I feel as though its popularity stems from the many controversies surrounding the timeline of its creation. For those who have known me for a while now will know that I am a Myron denier. Jet is a powerful hallucinogen that is capable of triggering strong bursts of energy and a euphoric rush. It can typically be found in small, easily portable inhalers, making it quite easy to administer and carry. When inhaled, it provides a dramatic increase to energy, speed, and reflexes. This chem grants the user's ability to move and react faster, effectively slowing down their perception of time. In-game, this translates to a few different things. In Fallout 2, Jet gives more action points, strength, and perception. In Fallout 3 and New Vegas, it only gives an increase to the player's maximum action points. And in Fallout 4, Jet slows down time for a short duration. Again, this only makes time appear slow. The reality is, is that you're just moving faster than everyone else. In real life, Myron's way of creating his jet is akin to jankum, or fermented waste. In this case, Myron used fumes from Brahmin dung to create the chem. However, some form of jet also appears pre-war, as seen with Vault 94. This jet, I'd imagine, is created in a similar process, but as two-headed Brahmins didn't exist before the Great War, it was likely from some other kind of fertilizer or manure. The effects of Jet, however, are less like Jankum, a hallucinogen, and more similar to stimulants like amphetamines. Amphetamines are known to increase energy levels, alertness, and some are prescribed to treat ADHD. However, if you're just naturally a speedster like myself, you don't need Jet for some temporary speed. You'll just feel extra slow after the effects wear off. Don't risk getting addicted to animal poop. Don't take Jet. Medex since first being introduced in Fallout 3, Medex has become a staple of the Fallout franchise. The chem is known for its potent pain-relieving properties. Medex typically comes in the form of a pre-filled syringe, making it easy to administer when things go awry, like in a firefight perhaps. When injected, Medex significantly reduces the user's sense of pain. Because of its powerful effect, one can see how useful it is in the unforgiving wasteland. In-game, this translated to an increase in the player's DR, or damage resistance stat. It's pretty useful when swarmed by enemies. Medex is probably the easiest to discern in terms of real-life counterpart. Medex is quite comparable to opioids, or more specifically, morphine. In fact, prior to the release of Fallout 3, Medex was just going to be called morphine. However, Australia laws banned video games from having references to real drugs, so the chem was changed globally. This is why Medex's editor ID is just the word morphine. Morphine essentially just blocks pain signals, providing a sense of relief to those under its effects. But just like Hydra, you want to feel the pain. A folk like you don't need no stinking pain relief. You think Doc Mitchell gave the courier Medex after Benny shot him in the dome? Heck nah, that stuff is expensive and Doc is a businessman first. Don't take Medex. Mentats. Another recognizable chem in Fallout are Mentats. Before there was Daddio, there were Mentats. Developed by MedTech Laboratories, Mentats were a popular pre-war chem. Their popularity and highly addictive nature were the primary factors that led to the chem being widespread in many academic circles. Mentats were so popular, in fact, that MedTech released several fruit-flavored versions, hoping that they would break into the youth demographic. Further, in the wake of nuclear destruction, some wasteland chemists managed to hybridize mentats with other chems, creating concoctions such as psychotats and the aforementioned bufftats. Quite the popular chem. Typically found in retro-style tins, mentats are chalky red tablets designed to be a brain booster. When consumed, mentats enhance the user's cognitive functions, providing a notable boost to memory-related functions and other mental processes. 
In-game, this is represented by the chem granting temporary bonuses to intelligence and perception, not dissimilar to Daddio. Daddio is essentially just a more potent Mentat. Anywho, Mentat's real-world equivalent is, again, likely some sort of nootropic. These medicines are known for their ability to improve cognitive function, like memory and creativity. While the effects of Mentats are similar to nootropics, their appearance and tendency to be found in places like the Big Empty and vault Tech University indicate that they also might share some similarities with Adderall, an amphetamine used to help users stay focused on an activity. Still, just like Daddio, you don't need Mentats to score an A on your GOAT test. If Butch Deloria can pass the GOAT, you can too. Don't take Mentats. Psycho Another quite recognizable chem in Fallout is Psycho. Psycho is known for its powerful combat-enhancing effects. Created by a private company on behalf of the US military, and more specifically General Constantine Chase, Psycho was designed for common foot soldiers to be used in combat encounters. A holotape found in Operation Anchorage notes that an early iteration of Psycho was being prepared for use in the Anchorage conflict. Psycho is typically administered through a syringe, allowing for a quick way for the chemicals to enter one's bloodstream. Once injected, most variants of Psycho dampens higher brain function, speeds up reflexes, and increases aggression. In-game, this is reflected by Psycho's increased damage in Fallout 3, New Vegas 4, and 76, and Psycho's damage reduction in Fallout 1, 2, 4, and 76. Yeah, they kind of fooled around with the effects of it in between game releases. Nothing wrong with that. Just know that Psycho is designed specifically for combat purposes, hence the combat improvements rather than special stat improvements. Now, while I haven't spent much time talking about the side effects of these chems, as a lot of them tend to just be addiction, Psycho is a bit different. While yes, Psycho is addictive and prolonged abuse can lead to addiction, Psycho was a chem that was accelerated through clinical trials in order to get into the hands of foot soldiers. It's an experimental chem. As such, lore in the game reveals a number of in-lore side effects, ones that are not reflected through gameplay. People with weak hearts can suffer fatal heart attacks, Pacer, Big Jesus Mordino, and John Cassidy are notable characters who will die if exposed to Psycho. The aforementioned holotape notes that long-term effects include psychosis, dementia, internal bleeding, and elevated levels of aggression. It's not too good for you, in it. Now, as for a real-world equivalent, Psycho is comparable to a mix of stimulants and anabolic steroids. Stimulants like amphetamines would provide energy boosts and improved physical performance, something that Psycho seems to do with soldiers. In fact, an article from Time mentions that Allied and Axie forces used amphetamines, notably mentioning that the Nazis used methamphetamine to give their soldiers a sort of hyper-alertness. So there is some precedent for using amphetamines in wartime. And as mentioned before, Anabolic steroids can enhance physical performance significantly, leading to its comparison with Psycho. But let's be real, anyone who takes Psycho is probably a Psycho. It's in the name. And you don't want to be a Psycho, do you? Don't take Psycho. Rebound Our next chem is unique to follow New Vegas. Rebound is a makeshift energy boosting chem scarcely found in the Mojave Wasteland and its surrounding regions. The chem looks like two small containers taped to a hip flask. Liquid from the vials are connected to the flask with some tubing, and the top of the flask is replaced with a syringe. You can tell that it was likely made by a pre-war junkie. Upon injection, the user experiences an instant energy boost, allowing them to navigate stressful situations more effectively. In-game, the chem increases action point regen by 5 points per second, for a total of one minute. Now, based on the effects of the chem, it is likely some mixture of liquid jet and an adrenaline-boosting substance like the many-mentioned amphetamines. And as I already said that normal jet was just some kind of amphetamine already, that makes rebound some kind of super jet. To further corroborate that rebound is just some type of jet, Upon getting addicted to rebound, the game instead says that you've become addicted to jet. 
But don't fret, Rebound isn't the only jet hybrid we'll talk about today. And oh yeah, don't take Rebound. Slasher Similar to Rebound, Slasher is another unique New Vegas exclusive chem, where Psycho in Fallout 4 and 76 have other damage increasing and damage resisting properties, New Vegas uses Slasher to achieve the same effect. Slasher is a makeshift hybrid chem, crafted by combining Psycho, two Stimpaks, and two Banana Yucca Fruit. The resulting concoction is found in a syringe for easy injection. When injected, Slasher grants the user the aggressive combat advantages of Psycho, along with the pain-relieving effect normally associated with Med-X. In-game, this is reflected by Slasher granting increased damage and increased damage resistance for one minute. And just like how Rebound gives Jet addiction on overuse, Slasher gives Psycho addiction when used too frequently. If you were never going to take Psycho, and you were never going to take Med-X, why Slasher? Besides, the name is a bit too edgy for my tastes. Don't take Slasher. Steady New Vegas really went all out with these crazy chems only for them to never be used again. Steady is a unique New Vegas chem that provides a boost to accuracy and control when presented with high stress situations. Steady is a makeshift chem that appears to use a Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle, some duct tape, and a rubber hose. When inhaled, Steady would appear to calm the nerves of the user, as many Wasteland folks use it in combat to better their weapon control and accuracy. In-game, Steady eliminates weapon spread for one minute. If Steady were to have some real-life equivalent, I'd wager it's some sort of beta blocker or anti-anxiety medication. Beta blockers block the effects of epinephrine, aka adrenaline, allowing the heart to beat more slowly and with less force. Alternatively, benzodiazepines, anti-anxiety medications, can help reduce nerves and improve control when in stressful situations like combat. Still, if you rely on chems for better aim, you ain't gonna last long out in the Mojave Wasteland. Don't take steady. Turbo our final Nuveg 6 exclusive chem is yet another jet derivative, Turbo. Turbo appears to be made from combining a jet inhaler with a can of hairspray. When inhaled, it delivers an effect similar to jet, giving the user a heightened state of awareness and reflexes, giving the illusion of slowing down time. In-game, it does exactly that. It slows down time for a brief period. And just like jet and other jet-like chems, it is likely some sort of stimulant. Why we got so much jet? It just don't make sense. Don't take turbo. Excel. And our final chem is one that was first introduced in Fallout 4, Excel. Excel is a rare prototype wonder chem that does a little bit of everything. A Fallout 4 loading screen describes the chem. Created before the war as a general performance enhancer, Excel never got out of the prototype stage but was widely distributed on the black market. It boosts every special stat for a limited period of time, but is highly addictive. Excel comes in a sleek looking inhaler. Kinda looks like it has some flame decals there, eh? When inhaled, Excel does a bit of everything. It's a general performance enhancer, a wonder chem. Who's to say what it can and can't do, you know? In-game, using Excel temporarily raises every special stat by 2 for a short period of time. Now, as for a real-life equivalent, there really isn't one. There are no do-it-all, all-in-one wonder medications. And besides, I don't think you need your general performance enhanced. You're great just the way you are. Don't take Excel. And that wraps up our educational tour of every addictive chem in the Fallout universe. From pre-war chems like Buffout, to any and all variants of Jet, Fallout has a plethora of harmful and addictive chems. I will say that this was probably on the more wilder side of the videos I've made, but I think we kept it informative and educational. Don't do chems, kids. They're not good for you. So, let this be a warning, fellow Vault Dwellers. If you really want to up your perception stat, just put on a pair of specs. But that's all from me today, folks. If you like the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Join the Discord, 
Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. You look fine to me. I hope this isn't drug-seeking behavior. Though, I've never seen anyone get addicted to stim packs. <laughs>